Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Meatless Mains. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined by Beth and Elizabeth to tell us about their recipes. And today, we're also joined by a special guest, our coworker Amanda. So, Beth, tell us what you made. All right, friends. What I made is called an eggplant parm sandwich. It's, it is meatless. It's not vegan. And I was intrigued by it. I'll, I'm going to show you a picture because my picture is really don't it looks good right okay so what it was what it is is <clears throat> it's eggplant and you make it in a crock pot that's the other weird thing so eggplant and spices and cheese to make it into a loaf that's the premise of it and you put that loaf you fashion the loaf in a crock pot that's lined in foil and then you add tomato sauce and cheese to it and then you cook it for and this is where the literally the rubber met the road because so I'll go back. So I I I I followed the directions. Um it calls for ricotta cheese and some garlic and basil and oregano and parsley. And instead of that, I had pesto that I had taken out of my freezer. So I used a half cup of pesto. But I thought that was good instead of you know grated parmesan. It also calls for red pepper flakes and then a couple cups of breadcrumbs and so then so that's where the loaf comes in so I so I sauteed as it said the um cubed uh, eggplant just for a few minutes and then I processed it so I processed it too long um it it looked like it looked like baba ganoush you know but it should have been a little chunkier um and but it tasted good. But the thing was, the directions also said to cook, to cook it on low for eight hours. And that was, so you top it with tomato sauce and then cubed mozzarella cheese. But since I left the house and came back, it was way too long for the, it really kind of rubberized the cheese, which was disappointing. Uh, the recipe calls for you to slice it and put it on sourdough bread. It wasn't great with sourdough bread. <laughs> um, but I did take the um let me show you a picture of the mess that it made with the, the brown um uh, cheese. Um, but then I made I took the filling and I used puff pastry and I made some rolls with that, and that was very good. And I would I, I think that was a good way to to save it um but after a few days i just wasn't really into it anymore so i did pitch some but um but i i did end up eating it uh not as a sandwich um but and i'd say with the the puff pastry it was a good way to go um and i've got a picture of that if i didn't mention it um so my my final uh vote on this is i would make it again if i have a surplus of eggplant so I wouldn't go looking for it and I would process it slower or actually I wouldn't even fully process. I think I would just mix it by hand because it was, the yeah, the breadcrumbs trying to grind up all the breadcrumbs into it made it too, too small. So, um, so that's, that's my recipe, eggplant parm sandwich. Well, the concept you... sounds amazing. So I can understand yeah. why you tried it. Like that yeah. you could make like a loaf of that. And so it, like, that sounds so cool, right? Yeah, it does, right? That's why I but wanted to share it. I love that you rescued it. And I also think that your ideas for fixing it in the future are super solid. So I think you've got something good here. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I'm not a big eggplant fan. I have spent years trying to figure out ways to eat it because it's cool looking and I get it in my CSA um and I do feel like this this is like a good like I feel like for me the best way to eat eggplant is to like mask it <laughs> um and this is 
seems like a promising way to do it with like tomatoes and cheese and like delicious herbs. Um, I would love to see like, I'm looking forward to seeing your photos because I want to, I want to like see what it looked like yeah, you know, when I, it was done. Right. I, yeah, we always wait and share the photos later and I was going to show it to you ahead of time as a heads up, but then I was like, you're going to go, what is this? <laughs> so, um, I gave you fair warning, but, but anyway, yeah, I, I still want to share it because it was an interesting concept. So, so was it actually oh. like a solid loaf, like to slice? Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to. Okay. Yep. And, uh, if it hadn't been so mushed up, you know, it, it, it was, it tasted pretty good, but the jury's still out. But anyway, uh, thanks for letting me share that. And so let's hear what our special guest, Amanda has to share. All right, so first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, none of the meals I make contain meat or dairy. I'm a longtime vegan, so for me, all of my meals are meatless, whether they have a main or not. Um, so the, the recipe I chose for to, to, to chat with you guys about is a Korean dish called tteokbokki, and it is from this popular cookbook. Well, it's not from this, but the Korean vegan. It's a very popular cookbook the past year. Um, and the recipe is actually not from here. It's from the, the author, Joanne Molinaro. It's from her website. She has more recipes there. And my favorite way to find recipes I want to try is looking at beautiful pictures on Instagram and then saving them in a folder and digging them up later. And this one, I, um, I've been really wanting to make my own dokwoki at home. So dokwoki is actually, it's just, it's right. It's rice cakes. And this one is a spicy rice cake. You can also make like, um, a savory version of it, but this one is a spicy rice cake. So from the author, dokboki is a popular Korean street food made out of chewy rice cakes, which are naturally gluten-free, and a fiery red sauce. The word dok means rice cakes, and boki refers to bokum, which means stir-fried. So it's basically stir-fried rice cakes. Um, and I chose this recipe because it had a bunch of vegetables thrown in. Traditionally, or not traditionally, but in some versions of it, it's just a lot of rice cakes and a, a sauce, a savory, or a hot sauce. Um, some of them have fish cakes, little um, thin fish cakes in there, or like a hard-boiled egg on top. I skipped all of those things, and I chose this recipe also because the the level was easy, and it was 30 minutes or less, so it's a great weeknight meal, and that is exactly what it did, and I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. This was also my first time making my own dokwoki at home. Uh, her recipe, she calls for using fresh rice cakes, which I did not have refined, so I used frozen um, which I got at the Asian market. So the first step is to, if you don't have fresh dope, is to prepare that. So I soaked it in water for maybe 15 minutes to defrost it. And then I boiled it for a couple minutes. And with the, the trickiest part of this whole recipe is getting your rice cakes because you don't want them to be too, you boil them too long or cook them too long. They'll be like too chewy and too sticky and too, you want it to have a nice chewiness um, versus like too soggy. Um, so once your rice cakes are set, you put a little oil and some salt and pepper on them, put them in a bowl, let them sit, and then you get started on the recipe. Um, so you start with some sesame oil and some soy sauce and your sliced mushrooms. At this point, you've already chopped all of your different vegetables up. So you get your sliced mushrooms, you mix them in with a little bit of soy sauce and some sesame oil, let those marinate for a little while, and then you work on your sauce. And the sauce has gochujang, which is the, the chili paste. Then you also want to use Korean chili flakes. You don't want to substitute with a different kind. Um, the chili flakes, the Korean chili flakes are actually, it has more of like a texture of like a coarse salt. And it's not as fiery and hot as I expected it to be. And I bought a giant bag of it and I'm delighted to do more things with it. It has a really nice flavor. So Korean chili flakes, gochujang, some soy sauce, and some maple syrup. And you can tweak the quantities of any of these things if you want it um, less sweet or more um, spicy. And the gochujang I had, that kind of dictates the spiciness and the one I had wasn't like too spicy. So it ended up working out really well. So you've got your sauce made, you set that aside and then you've got a pan, you put some oil in it and then you throw in your marinated mushrooms, saute those up with your chopped garlic and some chopped onion, saute those up till the onions are nice and soft. And then you toss in the rest of your veggies. And I did what the recipe called for. It called for broccoli, carrots, and zucchini. So you saute all those together. That's it. Your rice cakes are on the side. Those are already done. You toss in your rice cakes, mix it up a little bit, 
You also add in some broth. It called for a mushroom broth. I had leftover vegetable broth, so I put that in there. Um, and then you boil it. Not Again, you don't want to go crazy on the length of boiling because your the rice cakes will get too too chewy or too soggy. Um, but you make it, you boil it, and then your sauce starts to thicken. You just kind of keep stirring as it's boiling, and you can see that sauce kind of like thicken and everything is coated, and that's it. And then you plate it, and I topped it with some sesame seeds. The recipe called for sliced green onions, and I guess you were supposed to saute those with the vegetables. I put them on at the end. I like having a raw onion on top of something that's spicy because it gives it that little, that little palate cleanser. And the recipe, I, don't, I think I have it here, but in um, one of the lines in the recipe said something like how how hot this is going to be, like have a gallon of water handy because it is so hot. And I I like spicy. I've become much more accustomed to being able to palate like a spice. And it wasn't too spicy for me. I mean, it is if you're not if you don't like spicy, this one might not be for you. But it was not too spicy for me. I really really enjoyed it. Um, it was a great like weeknight meal once you have the things. One thing about that I love about her cookbook here is that at the beginning she has a great pantry section and she explains some of the different um, spices and sauces and um, from Korea that you can get. And once you have those in your pantry, you can make so many different amazing dishes. And I was very happy that my the my rice cakes turned out. Um, when you go, if you go to buy frozen rice cakes, they come in like in a cylinder shape or like a flat one. Um, these ones you want to use the cylinder shape and I'll throw up a picture here and you can see what it looks like. It was super, super delicious. I could literally make this every single night and eat it. It's just super good. If I made it again, I might um, get like a nice pre-baked tofu and slice it really thin and throw that in there just for some added protein, just throw it in there. But there you are. I mean, I feel like this is a can do something like um, a pasta dish where it's just like a big bowl of everything. And I just... I just loved it. So that is my, or the recipe for Dokboki from the Korean vegan. Sounds delicious. I love it. Um, I'm always impressed when people can get their sauces to thicken properly. So good job. Mm -hmm. um, what is the texture? So I'm, I was listening. So you're sauteing the vegetables and then they're boiling. Do they have any, like, do they get pretty soft or, or do they fall apart or how? Like, are they still intact? I'm just thinking about how much you cook them. Like, what is the vegetable texture at the end of the preference. You could probably do it to preference, but at the end, you're not really boiling. You just want to get the, you add in, the pan is already hot and your vegetables are already pretty cooked. You can undercook them um, a little bit if you want to. And then you basically just want to boil, you're only boiling it for like a couple of minutes. Okay. Even, just to get the, just to get that sauce to thicken up. Because once you add that, um, the vegetable broth, you want it just to get it to thicken up a little bit. So when you plate it, you don't have a bunch of there's no there's not a lot of runny sauce it just right. seems like it's a nice little um but the carrots were definitely crunchy it means zucchini always gets soft i was a little worried about that but a lot of um the dishes in this book contain zucchini um but we like sliced them thin enough and it was i didn't have any issue with the consistency i would have for this one i did it i do feel like the rice cakes were a little too soft so i would i would soak them less or boil them like i boiled them separately and then i was putting them in boiling water so i'd probably skip that and that's not in the recipe. That was just like me experimenting and figuring out like how to like make a rice cake that was like the nice amount of chewiness. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not familiar with rice cakes like that. Same. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say the same thing. Oh, they're so good. If you like spicy, like in veggies, like it, it was not hard. I highly recommend it. It was a really easy like evening meal. Like I could really eat them every day, which you should not do. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> it like the rice So you can do lots of different things to the rice cakes it sounds like like it's a base for mm -hmm. other yeah, I, mean, I guess things. i don't want to compare it to like a pasta or a rice but it's like you're considered it's like your grain and yeah. then you can make like a this just has a lot of the the gochujang and the, the chili flakes so it's spicier it's like a nice red color but you can also do um a base that's okay. like more savory with like mushrooms yeah and one Go ahead. <laughs> I was curious if you do you have to get it at an Asian grocery store or do we have them here in because Ann Arbor has got a lot of yeah I just bought them at one of the Asian markets here in Ann Arbor. Okay. Um, I like going and stocking up on all kinds of like dumplings and things at the cool. store and getting different sauces, like good bottled sauces and spices. So it was my first time looking for it and I found it and I bought four containers of it. <laughs> okay. I'm stocked up to make this recipe many times. <laughs> oh, I have one more. 
No, go ahead. <laughs> I have one more question. Um, so the rice cakes, how, like, well, how big are they? Like how many did you boil? Like, is it like, I used, um, her recipe says a half, I think her recipe says a half a package of Korean rice cakes. I don't know how big that's very vague to me because it could be any size package. And I was cooking this for a, a dinner for two. And so it was just like, um, kind of a smaller skinny package. And I dumped, dumped the whole thing out and put them in the water. My friend was like, Oh, you're making them all. And I was like, I don't know, but we had a lot of, like, once we chopped up all of the vegetables, we also had a ton of vegetables. So I feel like it was a good, I wanted a lot of vegetables in it. Like some of these dishes, you can have like few vegetables or none at all. I, I wanted a lot of veg. So I think it was, but I, I wanted there to still be enough rice cake to like have that chewiness. Um, cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks for introducing that new thing to us. It's obviously none of us have ever cooked with that. And it sounds really interesting. And so I'm definitely going to go look for it and give it a try. And also wanted to say that I saw that book on the express shelf at Westgate yesterday. And I almost picked it up, but it looked a little intimidating to me. So thank you for sharing it. Maybe I will actually um, take a look at it. So appreciate yeah. that. Well, and I will say that some of the recipes that are in the book are definitely more detailed with more steps. Um, I really like adapting recipes and skipping things and omitting things. I'm really terrible about following directions. Um, <laughs> when it comes to cookbooks, I want to do it my own way. Um, and the, all the recipes in here are vegan, so I didn't have to adapt it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but some of them, it just takes a long time. A lot of them are like Sunday afternoon. The other dishes I made from the book. But when I was looking for a dokbuki recipe to make, and I went to look up hers to see if she had any on our website. And this one was just like super easy. It looked at my level. We could make it like in a half hour. So that drew me to it. So I, I totally agree that the, I think, and not just this cookbook, some cookbooks can be intimidating with the, it's like, oh, I'm never going to find those ingredients. That's going to take four hours, that kind of thing. It's going to cost $30 for all the extra stuff. Um, so yay. <laughs> well, thank you for letting me share. Um, Elizabeth, what did you make for your meatless name? Yeah, thanks. Um, okay. So I really wanted to make something with mushrooms. I love mushrooms so much. Um, kind of the wrong time of year for that endeavor, but I forged ahead anyway. Um, my favorite thing is to get the like amazing mushrooms in the spring at the farmer's market, um, all different kinds. So good. Um, but they are also pretty expensive. So um, I went to Arbor Farms and they did have some nice mushrooms there, um, but they were pretty pricey. Um, all this to say, I made a few modifications, but my recipe is called um, longevity noodles. I originally found it, um, in food and wine. Um, but I guess they're a lunar new year recipe, um, that is commonly made. Um, and it looked really easy. And so I gave it a whirl. So basically, um, it's, uh, uh, I guess I'll just go through what you do. So you stir together, um, some soy sauce, some sesame oil, some rice vinegar, and then this called for, um, a, uh Cetron chili bean paste called Dubanjang. I did not have that. Um, I Googled what I could substitute and they said goju chang would be okay. So I used that instead. So you put those four things together in a bowl, mix them up, set it aside, and then you heat some neutral oil in a pan and add some chopped onion, some um, grated ginger and some chopped garlic. And you just kind of stir fry that quickly until it's fragrant. And then you transfer the, that to a small bowl also and set it aside and just leave the um, skillet as it is. And then you add in a little more um, oil and then you're supposed to add in four cups of torn and sliced mixed mushrooms. So it called for oyster, shiitake, enoki, blah, blah. I did get some oyster mushrooms at Arbor Farms and some shiitake, couldn't find enoki. And so I um, also just threw in some like, uh, uh, baby Bella's because I was, it was getting stuff was adding up. So I had, uh, and then like four cups is a lot. So, um, that was my mixture. Um, and you, um, so you stir fry them, the skillet's already hot about a minute or two, and then you add in, um, a pound of cooked lo mein noodles that you have prepared previously, according to package directions, um, add that in, and then you add in 
the um, sauce mixture that you made originally and the onion garlic mixture and you just kind of toss it until the noodles have absorbed a little bit of the sauce and you're just kind of um, mixing it together. And then it, it's, it's at about two minutes. I felt like it took a little longer. Take it off the heat and you top it with fresh scallions. Um, it said furikake if you wanted. I didn't, I would have, but whatever, I just didn't. And then um, it said, uh, you can also top with cilantro if you want it, which I did because I had that. Um, so I hadn't worked with lo mein noodles before. That was a little, um, I mean, I followed the directions, but I, I don't know, they were a little tough. So I'm not sure that I made it quite right, but like, it was still totally fine. Um, and it was really delicious. I love mushrooms. It was like pretty, especially when we put the green garnishes on. Um, the sauce was delicious, spicy, the onion garlic, so good. Um, I guess I did question if it was really a meatless main because I felt like um, maybe it would be nice with like a side, like Asian salad or something just for a little more veg. Um, but it was fine. Like it definitely filled me up and it was super good. And I liked it. It was fun. Like longevity noodles. It's the new year. I just thought it was a good, uh, um, I liked that concept and it was really easy. I mean, Amanda was talking about how a weeknight recipe, this for sure was that too. I mean, it was uh, 20 minutes, you know, maybe 30, depending on how fast you can tear up mushrooms. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to add it to the rotation. It was good. Um, I was glad I tried it and I love mushrooms and, you know, um, this is a good recipe for, for that. So that's my longevity noodles. Oh, I have a picture to share, uh, here. You can kind of see what it looks like. So, yeah. Nice. That's funny. You both use goji. How do you say it? Goji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Delicious. yeah, that sounds yummy. That's good. Cool. Have you ever, um, do you ever use dried shiitakes and just keep them in your cupboard and then like hydrate those? Cause I, that's what I've been using cause it's so much cheaper and it gets a nice, like as someone who doesn't eat meat, it gives you like a nice chewy consistency depending on your dish. I was just thinking that I need to start doing that. Like often I'm not thinking far enough ahead. Like I was going to make this recipe and I was like, oh, like I'm going to go make it today. So I'm like going to the store and I'm going to get mm -hmm. these things. But I was actually thinking, so I was like, I need to just pick up some of these and have them and like be ready to hydrate them as needed. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, that is a good idea. And they stay in your, they, they stay in the cupboard for a while and you can tell oh, yeah. by the time you slice them, it's like, it's huge quantity. Yeah. 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 Amazing. I didn't, I didn't, would never have thought of that. So great tip. Um, Katie, do you want to share what you made for your meatless main? Oh, sure. Okay. So the recipe that I am sharing with you today is for Szechuan vegetable rice. So we clearly have a theme going here. Um, this is a recipe that is my husband's. He makes this all the time. Um, it's a nice weekday meal. It takes less than 30 minutes to throw things together and you can use whatever vegetables you have on hand. So I really like that about it. This actually didn't have a recipe to it until a couple of days ago. And I wrote it all out as I watched him make it. So um, basically you start out with two cups of cooked rice. Uh, we usually make that the day before just because the texture is nice when you cook it up with the vegetables that way. You can cook it right before, but it saves time to do it the, the day before as well. So we tend to do it that way. And then you um, have some frozen vegetables usually. We have uh, peas and carrots that we generally have in the freezer and broccoli as well. Um, take those out and uh, defrost them a little bit. So we usually cook them about half the time that you normally would so that they're not completely cooked through, but they're not like totally uh, frozen anymore. Um, and then take a large skillet or wok over high heat and put some canola oil in there um, add garlic and ginger, and then your Szechuan flavors come from Szechuan chili flakes and Szechuan peppercorns. I really enjoy the Szechuan flavor. It's a it's a citrusy flavor that like some people say has this tingly sort of numbness to it that kind of happens in your mouth when you eat these things. I know that it can be like an acquired taste though. Some people don't like that, and you can definitely make this with just regular old pepper flakes and it'll be good. It just won't be Szechuan. Um, so you cook 
cook all that stuff together, stir it up a little bit, and then you make your sauce, which is just a combination of soy sauce and mirin, which is a rice cooking wine. And you take about half of the, that sauce that you made, add it into your pan with your veggies, and then um, you stir that all up. So just the frozen veggies to start with that, because we're going to add some fresh veggies in a minute. And then cover that up for a little bit and then get that all cooking, put in your rice. And then um, the other half of your soy sauce and mirin. And you know what, now that I'm looking at my recipe, I actually skipped where you put the fresh veggies in. So you put the fresh veggies in before the frozen veggies, which makes sense now that I'm saying it. Our fresh veggies are usually celery and serrano peppers. I love the flavor of a serrano pepper in here where I'm usually like a jalapeno lady, but um, with the, this dish, I particularly love a serrano so much that if we don't have serranos, like I just am like, forget it, let's make something else. Uh, so love that, but you know, you can use whatever fresh veggies you have on hand, whatever you like will go nicely in here usually. Um, and then, so fast forwarding again until all your veggies are in your pan, then you add your rice and then you put in your other half of your sauce. So more soy sauce and mirin and you just mix that all up, cover it for a little bit, get everything nice and steamed together. And then you just add some chopped up green onion on top. Uh, and then you uh, drizzle, I like a heavy drizzle, but drizzle to taste some sesame oil over top the whole thing. And uh, I serve it with chili crisp. So there's a lot of chili crisp is like a very popular condiment right now. There's a lot of recipes out there going around. I have not tried making it myself yet, but the brand that I really like is Lao Gan Ma Spicy Chili Crisp. Otherwise, we call it Grandma's Chili Crisp because there's a little grandma on the jar. Uh, but that's our favorite. And this is one of my very favorite things to eat. Um, and I just love it because it's it's tasty, but it's also like so versatile. If you put some tofu in here, that'd be really good. And then if you know, if you want to step out of the meatless boundaries, chicken, pork, whatever is good in here. But um, yeah, you just throw it together and it takes no time at all. It's really good. I love recipes like that, that are like, so flexible and so good and you just like have the veggies and the like flavors and like I can just like I know I would just eat so much of it because I would just be like this is so good <laughs> this is like delicious yeah my plate's like usually like a, a pile <laughs> yeah that's how mine would be yes now oh, that sounds really delicious and I make a lot of dishes like that with a big pile of rice and veggies and a variety of sauces so I'm happy to hear that others enjoy that as like a weeknight meal. I have to ask though Katie when you make this on a normal like Tuesday night you guys are cooking together do you usually put a meat in there or do you like to have it meatless every once in a while or? Yeah good question we do both and it generally depends on what we have left over in the fridge. So um, if we've got some leftover chicken or pork, we'll probably toss it in there. But if not, we don't make the meat special to put in, in the meal. We're fine with it without. Do you make this in the summer or is it like too spicy for you when it's hot out? It's definitely not something we think of as much in the summer. Okay. So we probably yeah. do just because it's convenient. So it's yeah. like one of those things where you're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to make for dinner? Like we have all of the stuff yeah. for veggie rice. So let's like just do yeah. that. So yeah. we do, but maybe not as much as like in the winter where I'm like, let's make the veggie rice. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, well, sounds good. You guys uh, all kind of had similar, slightly similar Eastern Asian style. So yeah, it is funny how sometimes that happens. It's really funny. Yeah, I like it. But I mean, you get a good grain, you get some veggies, like the sauces, if you get a good flavor, if you get like a really good sauce or a good flavor, you can put it on anything and it's going to be delicious. So, and I love that you um, threw some chili crisp on there, Katie. I'm a huge fan of chili crisp. I've been obsessed with it for like the past year and a half and I just want to put it on everything. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> it's so good. 
Okay. Well, with that, I want to thank everybody for watching Recipe Share and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time and we'll be talking about creative combinations. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with recipe.